can't hear you, Nancy. Better? Hi, Nancy. Hi. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to join these since they started, and I just had an opportunity today. So nice to oh. everybody. I won't. I, I'm an instructor out here in Arizona, and just happy to be. Here. Cool. We have instructor in Arizona, instructor in Florida. Roger, where are you these days? I'm in Reno. Reno? <laughs> How cool. <laughs> and then the rest of us are in uh, Marin, in Northern California. Right, so our fearless leader, Zaina, is stuck at the doctor's. So okay. we're going to um, go ahead without her. She asked us to. And what uh, we've been doing is Zaina um, teaches a couple of classes at Synergy and she has been coming up with what she call, what she's referring to as themes of the week and clients really love them so um we thought it was a good uh genevieve and i asked her to um work with us share with us what she what she's thinking and we'll share back um what she's thinking for the following week um for our own knowledge as well as you know, potentially incorporating that same theme into the classes we teach at Synergy. But then, you know, when Zaina gets here, assuming she does, or however the conversation flows, we can certainly talk about other things. Lots of times we bring questions or discussions like, what would be the best exercise or how do you do this, that kind of thing. So the theme for next week is precision. So her write up or description of it is, you made the time. Now let's not lose out on precious strengthening that we can gain. Precision is why Pilates exercises are so effective. Explore the Pilates repertoire with a deeper understanding of how to activate properly to squeeze the most benefit out of your Pilates practice. So I'll say, I'll just start with one of sort of my pet peeves and then um, ask the other people chime in. And it is that um, with the uh, abdominal exercises, the Pilates fives people, and I'll just demonstrate what I see a lot, because I know we're a lot in the pick your battles kind of thing when we work with our clients, so what, what's the most important thing? But when they're doing like single leg stretch and the leg goes out like this, and I really, and they go like this, <laughs> that's a different exercise. And so I've really been trying to work with my clients to say, take the time to straighten the leg. In addition to getting abdominal strengthening, you're going to, straight, you're going to strengthen your quads. We're going to work on some length in the back of your leg. You know, so that's my current pet peeve that I think where that precision of straightening the leg, still working on getting people to point their toes if that's what I want them to do or flex their foot. They kind of go all over the place, but you know, get half, half the battle. So, so that's my my um, interpretation of what this means, and one of my pet peeves. So I'm going to ask others to. Um, I'll jump in. I would totally concur with that. It is it is very frustrating when someone won't slow down enough to actually activate and don't get me started when they go into the obliques part of it because oh you know yeah. it's a lot of internal rotation and things we don't want but my pet peeve would be feet and straps and um doing leg circles and people that really just want to go for the gusto big range of motion their pelvis is flying all over the place and i get it it feels good but trying to keep connection you know and i don't know if this is specifically geared towards mat or reformer but i do a lot of reformer equipment as well so i just that's a big one for me trying to stay connected in leg circles and really use the right and obviously the breathing you know getting the breathing involved getting the in terms of uh, movement and sticking to the range of motion that is what they can achieve keeping stable through their pelvis so i i feel that there's a lot of the integrity is lost in that sorry sometimes 
Yeah, I mean, we have um, we've the, the reform. We have talked about the equipment um, pet peeves, I guess, or precision important. Um, we have talked. We've leaned a little bit more, and it's great because you can do no. leg circles on the mat too. Um, That's exactly. You can do them bad. You can do them even worse on the mat, <laughs> more badly. Exactly. Um, That's precise. Exactly. We've been leaning a little bit on the map stuff just because of COVID and we're all teaching. Uh, I'm going to send you an email as well, but I was going to see if on Monday. Let me, I let me just mute myself. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. But that, that was great because the, the leg circles without the feet and straps is really hard to teach, I think, Absolutely. in the map class. Absolutely. I agree. And I'll, I'll focus more on Matt then too. I wasn't sure where, you know, like I said, I just yeah. jumped in. I'm trying to catch up on YouTube, but go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, well, we did just start offering some reformer classes again, so maybe we should start introducing some of those ideas again, too. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll jump in with one of my uh, precision pet peeves, which is the neutral spine versus or neutral pelvis and um, trying to describe that properly to people who have different body proportions and all of that. Um, and how like, how precise that actually needs to be to get the correct activation. Um, so I'm curious, I guess, maybe to hear how you guys maybe talk about neutral spine and neutral pelvis <clears throat> and how you deal with some of maybe um, your clients with more voluptuous bottoms or uh, <laughs> bigger, whatever it is, different proportions than what you have, um, which is sometimes harder to communicate. Yeah, good question. Anybody want to take that? <laughs> well, uh, I don't want to be the one to, I don't want to take over or jump into I know. I'm just saying, I, I try to focus on making the oblique connection first, and I ha I used to be a little <laughs> more now I, just, I have learned to just watch their movement, you know, get, get the oblique engagement, move into, uh, I believe you call it a pelvic curl. I was trained pelvic uh, imprint, pelvic tilt, but, um, and getting that, that movement to initiate from the abdominals. And then of course, you know, there has to be a little bit of um, wrap of the sits bones or however you want to think of it and then releasing back to neutral. And then I sometimes have them go full range and just rock back and forth, especially if they have larger glute muscles, because you're right, it is, it's, it's difficult to find that position. And then I have them just settle somewhere in between. And, you know, I used to be ASIS and pubic bone and making sure everything's level and very like that, but it, it doesn't work for everybody to find their neutral. And then after talking to several PTs, I've, you know, kind of, adjusted my teaching style a little bit because it's not necessarily going to be that ASIS and pubic bone level for everybody. So truly be in their neutral. Anyone yeah. want to? I would just uh, jump in. I don't know why this works exactly, but anytime I have a client where I, I feel like they're talking a lot or they're not really, don't, I'll start them out and went to neutral pelvis and then, you know, they always somehow get to more of a flat back position. Um, and part of that, I think, is just muscle weakness. So as they get stronger, it's easier to hold. Um, but um, if I take them through clock, a lot of times that, for whatever reason, I don't know why, that will correct it. So. If you do, you know, the, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, you know, the clock where you find six o'clock and nine o'clock um, and, you know, sort of shifting the, the pelvis, but just very micro movement. Um, it, it connects them to this area a little more and they're able to feel it and, and not have to really see themselves in the mirror or it, it gives them that muscle memory for what neutral is supposed to be for them. Hey, Allison, would you would you guys be up for having Allison talk us through that? Because I've heard the clock before, but I've not really used it. Yeah, likewise. 
Uh, yeah. Could you I, talk us through it? Oh, I don't know if I've got a ball here. Um, so just on a mat, uh, sometimes it can be uh, <laughs> a little... I'm ready. <laughs> can you guys hear me? No? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, if my automat, if you can see, um, I have them palpate their uh, ASIS, so finding those bones on either side, and then um, thinking about you know sort of the the idea of the flashlights um, pointing towards uh, the ceiling, and then the flashlights that are sitting on top of the ASIS pointing back towards um, your chin. So that flat back movement, that would be 12 o'clock. And then rocking forward onto the tailbone, pointing the flashlight kind of down towards your um, quads would be six o'clock. So starting just 12 o'clock to six o'clock, which is mostly, you know, with uh, the pelvic tilt is, um, but then thinking about rocking from the right to the left. So you're essentially depressing the, uh, the right side of the uh, pelvis and sort of gently lifting the left side for three o'clock and then going to the other side to nine. And if they're, they keep their fingers on the ASIS, they'll feel that shift. And it's a tiny, tiny movement, mm. but just sort of rocking from side to side gives them that feedback. You can also do this in a bridge position. So depending on your client, if you take them up into the bridge, going from three o'clock to nine o'clock is a little bit easier because you can really shift the hips a little more because you're not on the ground. And it's just sort of taking, tightening one side, loosening the other side to move back and forth. And I, I think um, for a lot of things in Pilates, if you've got someone who's used to being in a gym and doing like big concentric movements, um, these really uh, small movements becomes, uh, at first it's hard for them to not want to, you know, overdo everything. So something like clock, where it's a tiny movement, um, also reinforces the precision of Pilates. Absolutely. Also, doing that on a stability ball can be really helpful because they can connect with their pelvic floor a little bit better and they can actually feel their sitting bones. So I love, yes, great, I love that. Good, good suggestion. Like a big ball or a little ball? A big one, a big, a big stability ball, yes. Yeah. Hmm. And then, then they can have their feet too, which, you know, they're connected there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, Depending on the client, too, you can also use like a smaller ball like this under the pelvis. You just have to be careful, um, really know your client, make sure they, you know, if they have like SI joint instability, you don't want to put them um, on a ball like this. But if they are really tight through the hips, um, sometimes putting them, putting this under the sacrum can help with that, um, finding those micro movements as well. Hmm. Yeah, we've been trying a little bit of the coccyx curls or pelvic tilt like this. Is that what you mean, Allison? Yes. With it under your sacrum, yeah. And that feels really nice. So I have done the for you, but probably back and not forth. for Right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Genevieve? I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, actually, it feels really good for me. It feels good mm -hmm. for you? I thought that you were like super loose down there. Super loose, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's, maybe I'm just slightly over that threshold, oh, okay. but um, it it helps. I've got really tight low back because of my instability. And so it helps to 
just kind of really passively pull me into that coccyx curl um, in a way that, that just feels good. Um, but I could see if somebody's really unstable and they're kind of shifting on their feet a little bit to try and hold their stability where that would shift the, the sacrum out of place. So I can yeah. see. I think it gets stuck. Um, I, I know from personal experience, you know, it, it can kind of get stuck, um, tilted one way or the other, and then yeah, totally. you got to go get Thana to fix it, so. <laughs> I just had a, um, another thought on um, sort of about neutral spine kind of thinking about, um, but I also want to know, Allison, if, if you've uh, you finished with what you wanted to say about the, um... okay. Um, so yeah, hi, Allegra, everyone, if I haven't met you before. Um, and so, yeah, just thinking about kind of that clock, and I guess for me as a teacher, I get kind of dyslexic sometimes. I'm like, wait, is 12 down or is that? So I've actually started to, well, on my own, and I'm going to try it out with someone tomorrow. But um, just thinking about like, just lying there, and this is, I've heard this from Minje a lot talking. She's one of the teachers at Synergy. You know, you're just lying there with your knees um, bent, feet flat on the floor, head down, you know, just relaxed and just kind of like, just totally relax and kind of, you know, sometimes I put my hand under their back and, you know, just feel like if it's relaxed. But also, one of the things that um, I like is doing, just having them be totally relaxed. And if they're not, you know, I say just totally relax and then kind of go into a <clears throat> coccyx curl. So I guess I would, if they're unfamiliar with that, I would say, you know, make it so your hip bones get closer to the bottom of your rib bones so your back is longer and then you know go the other way so there's a little arch in the back and it's kind of like the middle in between those two i would think of the um gosh now what is it neutral spine right not your neutral pelvis um so that's for me that's how i i think of it um just sometimes i just feel like it's kind of it's in the middle but between the two that's helpful at all, or anyone has any feedback on that? Whoops, sorry, go. Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. That's probably, probably accurate. Um, yeah, I, I, I play, because I'm one of those loosey-goosey people, I play a lot with um, where my pelvis should be sitting, because it is such a question mark oftentimes. Uh, and I do, I find that I, for myself, will just lay flat and I, and I, and even in my group classes, when I get people to just begin with breathing in neutral, I have them take a breath or two just to settle the head, settle the tail, and then feel the natural space in the low back and the cervical spine. Um, and just reminding myself to do that helps because it just lets the tail kind of like drop down and, you know, feel the floor. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I do it for myself. And then, um, you know, I, I rarely get feedback from people as to whether that works for them, that idea. Uh, Cause some people do, they just get so tightened and like, I don't know, they're, they're afraid to le let the tail go um, or they're just so tight that they can't. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. I am actually was thinking about what Allison's comment about that, you know, coming from like a weightlifter kind of background. I mean, I wasn't coming from a weightlifter background, but I was actually really scared to like put my pel or spine in neutral because I thought I was going to hurt myself because mm -hmm. I had learned like doing squats and stuff with more of a, just from a like Bikram yoga and, you know, then doing other Ashtanga yoga but like kind of that coccyx curl. And I thought that was support. And so coming in, I guess, you know, coming into that other way of neutral spine, I was actually like, you know, it's the mo you're, you're vulnerable there, but I, I just, I was, I was actually really scared to do that. And so I see a lot, especially in reformer classes, just like tightening, like flat back so much tightening down because, you know, it's like that bearing down, which is, um, 
you know, it gets, gets to be like kind of just releasing that sometimes, but even going back a little bit to just the, um, into neutral spine, I've found it hard just to, well, with absolute beginners, just getting that breathing in neutral, <laughs> like people just want to, you know, I've had to say, um, yeah, just the precision, there's a precision in that too. Cause I used to say, okay, now just, you know, like think about your lower belly contracting. And then I had one person just contracting the lower belly and then they weren't doing the rest of the belly and they were coming from a belly dancing background. Um, but yeah, just, I think just behind that of the neutral pelvis, neutral spine, just the breathing in neutral. So I think that's like a really, so it's such a, one of like the basic kind of Pilates, you know, foundation as it, you know, as the precision is, you know, one of Joseph Pilates um, thing, but you know, so much in Pilates is about precision. And then you have that like aha moment. And you're like, oh my God, like I, I got it. And it's, it's amazing. So um, yeah, I just wanted to add that in there about just what's behind like the neutral spine, neutral pelvis. I have a comment um, around this discussion. Anyway, I'm Vajra. It's so great to be with you guys. <laughs> um, so what I can look, I do work with people more one-on-one -on -one than in group classes, which is really nice because we're all so different. But in terms of the way the pelvis is rotating, you know, if you have someone standing up and you're doing assessment, it's so easy to see, or it's common, I mean, to see, you know, people having a posterior tilt or an anterior tilt, you know, and so, and how that translates, right, that tilt of the pelvis on the mat or the reformer, because it's going to be easier for some people to do an anterior tilt if they're already in that position, mainly, or a posterior mm -hmm. So then like, where is that sweet spot for that particular person? And I love the clock because no matter if you have anterior tilt or posterior standing or in your kind of in, in your, in your body, that, that clock kind of teaches that, that, that um, person, right? Oh, well, this is a hard, it's hard for me to do, you know, the six or the, or, or the 12. And all that information is so great, right, for the client. Because I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, what, what's happening when I'm standing up to my pelvis with my pelvis? And can I be in neutral when I'm standing? Or, you know, where I, am I in time and space? And um, so it's, I just think that, you know, being in neutral sometimes is, it's really, it's so, it seems so easy, but it's actually really a complex and very advanced <laughs> position for the spine. Um, and so I don't always just routinely teach go into neutral. I'm more like, well, okay, well, where, where do you feel most connected to your pelvic floor and to the sides of your torso and to kind of what we call the powerhouse and even to your glutes, you know, like where, where do you feel the most connection? So I, I feel like I, I teach a lot from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's very individual for sure. Yeah. And then I'm curious, um, building on that, do you try to get people to um, gain more of the awareness in those other positions that maybe they don't after they kind of get comfortable moving or do you kind of primarily work with them in there? their comfort, that, that space that they're connected. Um, so if I'm working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I'm going to have them do what's hard for them. Say their, say their, their pelvis is, you know, anterior rotated. I'm going to have them in exercises. I'm going to have them try to back off that and, and do the exercise from the, the way their pelvis isn't moving. Obviously if they have like spondy or something, I'm going to be super careful, right? Because those vertebrae can be compressed and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong down there yeah. between L4 and five. So, you know, it's just on an individual basis, but, but as a kind of formula, I'm like trying to see kind of where in my mind I'm going, gosh, it would be great if they had that curve in their <laughs> spine there, <laughs> you know, like how can we get that curve back without harming them, you right. know, and where can they, where, where can they create a little bit more balance, you know, in, in balance of the pelvis. 
there's so much, even for me, like I have a right hip hop hike and I'm posterior rotated on the right side. So when I'm doing my Pilates class, I'm like, I'm trying to get in there and, and find some sort of balance (laughs) with those rotations. So I guess I'm, I'm teaching what's going on on some level with my own self, you know, with that idea of how to find balance. Cool. Um, anybody have any other precision moments? I'm, I'm tempted to go back to Kim's single leg stretch because I thought of the, the, coming, the knee coming in, how that tends to do this a little oh, that's bit. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're, they're wonky. So a lot of times we see people, it seems to often be the outside. Sorry, right, well, can you move back a little bit? I can't see your legs so much. Thank you. Sorry. There we go. Um, for our single leg stretch, whether it's head up or head down, people tend to let the knee go kind of yeah, exterior, external, exterior, rotated. Um, and so teaching the the truly like singular path aligned. I don't know. I try, I guess we have the hand positions, right? The, um, what is it? Outside. Right. That's right. Yeah. This, that, that is so hard to get across in a group class. They're yeah. like all over the place, but there's, but that's a good point because that there's a reason for that hand position. Yeah. It keeps it aligned. <laughs> yeah. To keep that alignment. That's a, yeah. Thanks for reminding me about the hand position. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm curious that precision. Um, do you guys have other ways that you try and teach that one or just kind of let people do as they will? I think one of my strategies for precision is I teach at a very slow cadence and they don't like, especially at this studio that I teach at, they're used to it. Like the owner is like, she's like, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's her clientele. They like it kind of hard and fast, but I'm like, okay, we're going to go slow this way down. <laughs> and that's my trick, right? It's like, well, you go slow and we can see like, what is your body wanting to do in that single leg stretch, right. you know, and hold it out there. And, you know, I think that some people don't like that, but that's just one of my strategies. Most <laughs> Go people slide. don't like it. Most people don't like to be slowed down. You're right. Absolutely. That's the most frustrating thing. And it's those subtle nuances. And as movement professionals, you, you see so much better in, um, when you slow it down. So absolutely. And you, well, they feel, we feel so much more. I mean, yeah. I, obviously, I'm sure you guys hear it all the time, as, as do I. Oh, it's harder that way. They're just trying to get it over with. <laughs> no work at all. Nothing. <laughs> I like to actually um, work on the, well, break it down a little bit, like slow, like Roger was saying, because I know people like to get moving and I have a tendency, I can get in, like if, I, if you let me, I will micromanage you. But um, <laughs> it, I like to start with the, like, Sorry, the knees to the to the chest, you know, if they can get their head up, great. And just work on like, okay, you know, your legs are in tabletop. Let's let's mm. try the hands. You know, mm. and then once you got the hand, the hand that's on top, the other or that leg stays in, the other leg goes up. So kind of I don't know, make it a little fun, a little bit like it's okay, if you get this, like we can add that on, you know, because they're still holding it with their belly in, legs, tabletop, so they're just by switching their hands, they're still doing something. So that's something that I've tried. But yes, I agree. That's hard to get that plane. And when you're, te- you know, the leg movements and then people start like, they want to do like the obliques and it's just, yeah, it gets cuckoo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, the obliques. So how, so how do you, because of course, crisscrosses the next, right? The best way to get people to do that properly. I'd love to hear tips on that because it's, you know, this every single time. And I just try to get them to come, 
you know, come up through the middle and look at the knee that they're working, look at the knee for where I want them to go, wide elbows, lift up, come back in and switch is the way that I've been trying to teach it. And of course, slow, because no matter how many times I tell a person, the same person, they still want to go back and forth like a crazy person. It's always the same person. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so like what are, what are, bottom yeah. rib to opposite hip. Bottom yeah. rib to opposite hip. I find that people seem to feel that. And then they really? don't rely so, yeah. Right. Even when you say like elbow to knee, they like do some wonky. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I never say elbow to knee. They personally, me, I see too many wonky things with that. Yeah, right. Or sometimes I mean, we'll say armpit to knee. Which yeah, like reach mm -hmm. up a little bit through that spot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was remembering straight. something that Zana said about how she, how people get into the right position to do exactly that. Um, let me show you to get for the. Um, she does it on the roller, right? So, oh shoot, see, yes, oh my God. So you're on the roller just to get the position first. And I had a lot of success with this for people that I was doing the obliques just, you know, with no prop. And then I started doing prop. They're like, oh my God, like I can't do 300 of them. I can actually just do like 10 or 15 now. We're just on the roller. Mm. And you, you might have missed this week. I can't remember, but Zaya was saying, so you're on the roller, right? You're in your you know, your neutral spine. And then I like to say, just, you know, cross your hands behind your back, get some, a little length in your neck, chin to chest a little bit, and gaze up or abs. Okay, then neutral spine, a little space in your back. Inhale, exhale, right, you're up. And then you, that opposite hand comes over and then you're just grazing like the outside mm. of the knee. And then you're in or outside of the thigh. And then you're in that perfect position. And I find that if they can get that, hopefully that that will transfer into like the bigger movements where there's like more moving pieces. Um, so I found that to be helpful. And so you would stay, um, you'd stay um, on one side and you would do yeah, I, I fatigue. Did, right. So 20 or whatever they can do. And then, you know, you can either to go down and go back up or switch to the other side. But I like to go down and come back up. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Rather than going back and forth, just like to get to slow down so they can get it. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a about doing like one side at a time where they can yeah. focus on that, that set of oblique connection and that connection. Yeah. Um, and before they, kind of wind up, oh, okay, I'm done with this one, I'm over this one, okay, I'm over this one, you know. Yeah. I've been teaching, not to change the subject matter, but I've been teaching abs um, on a half roller and kind of loving that because <laughs> like, I'm imagining their, you know, their spine, you know, on that half roller, they have the stability because it's half, right? And, you know, kind of teaching spinal alignment while engaging. So it's been, I've been playing around with that. Like that's mm -hmm. a fun moment. Yeah. yeah. That's a good tip. Yeah. Well, we could go on and on different, different areas where precision is so important. If we went to um, even any of the sideline series, right? Mm -hmm. There's the hip back, Back. Great, look at my mm -hmm. quad, right? So slowing it down. Um, for me, and I don't know if this is true for others, even the clamshells, which of course everybody comes in and some people say, my physical therapist told me to do 300 and I don't feel anything. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, for me, as soon as I get in position and I press my heels together, and I start to lift this leg up. I don't have a lot of mobility in my body. So I, I, I start to feel it in my glute right away. Like within two reps, I'm feeling it. So I don't know if that's what I've been cueing people to do on the, the clamshells is, is 
is not just lifting the leg, but pressing that heel in and sort of rotating from that position where the feet are connected. Right. That's my precision on that one. But plus you're in the perfect position because you're 45 at the hip and 90 at the knee. So often I see variations in that that are just tightening up piriformis and not right. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that's the main, the get, you know, the setup. The setup is huge in that. True. Absolutely. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. Looking down. I always look down to see if my heels are aligned with my glutes, my backside. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. up and down. And it gets really effective. Yes. Quickly. I've been teaching that particular exercise on the spinal corrector on the reform, like putting the spinal corrector on the reformer and then having them sideline on there so I can actually yeah. see so clearly instead of having them doing that flat yeah. on the reformer with like a, you know, the ball underneath ball. their head, which I've, you know, done oh, before. Right, right. I like, like art, I guess, yeah. I the like art. this. Yeah, I yeah, like the art. The arc. Yeah. yeah. Because in that group setting, I have yeah. eight people in there, but I'm like, oh boy, I can, I can identify it immediately. And I'm like, okay, let's get this lined up here. You know, like the angles you were just talking about, it's, you know, and, and um, sometimes not even using the straps at all. <laughs> I'm like, let's just, let's just get our alignment perfect. And with, ha with no resistance and see like how many we can do. <laughs> <laughs> they're like dying <laughs> that's the thing about the precision in pilates it's like if you're in like that right spot which is i love and hate about pilates at the same time it's like you can feel it within like two or three you know yeah when you're like right there yeah the sweet spot yeah i'll say one one cue that um i've found is sometimes helpful for people because there's a lot going on in the hip um, and if people are grabby and, you know, their TFL or their hip flexor or something, sometimes for whatever reason that takes over, mm -hmm. uh, for those people, I'll sometimes cue them to think about their sits bones coming together as they lift the knee, um, or that being the initi initiation to the knee lifting. And that sometimes for whatever reason brings it right into the glute in the spot that you want it. Um, and those the deeper rotators and so be, it being these superficial accessory muscles. So that's just one of those precision ones that I use. I see Kim's doing her. Live I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand. I'm sorry. I may have spaced out for a second. Will you do what with the sit? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry, let me. Get my mat view here. Um, so, you know, lines up for your for your clamshells. Um, I'll, I'll. So I've, you know, battled with the hip flexor thing a lot in my in my time. Um, and so what I'll do is, as Kim said, get the heels together. I'll actually like drive my heel down into my other foot um, to mm -hmm. disengage the front of the leg. And then I'll think about this left sits bone coming closer to my right sits bone so that it's sort of prying the knee open. Ooh, and sometimes you will cramp back there. It's prying the knee open and it, it, it feels deeper in those rotators to me um, rather than my normal muscle pattern, which would be hike up and the TFL or the, you know, quad or anything else kind of grabbing in there and kind of make it happen. Yeah, I really love to put the, the uh, strap theraband around when you're lying down around here, like tie it. And then they have a res resistance. So your hips stay on top of one another. Like if you had, I don't have one next to me, you guys, sorry, but it's, it helps. I just find that really effective to get in that precise place. Um, so I've, I've tried that and it's, it's been helpful as well. Just to add on to that. So you're talking about a, a TheraBand around like mid thigh or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just to give it like just some, um, you know, some feedback. Some yeah. Feedback. 
But to Vajra's point, I love using the arc when I'm in the studio. Yeah. On the, on the reformer or not, depending on the client, but just using that arc really helps get the hips aligned, especially if it's someone who is some of the elderly, it's really difficult for them to get their their one hip on top of the other. And this just does it. The arc just helps right away. Spine corrector. Yeah. So cool. Well, we, going all the way around to the, um, you know, the quadruped position, right? Precision there is so important. And one of, of course, Dana's uh, pet peeves is the, the head, right? This is your head. <laughs> the floating head. <laughs> So um, precision, right? The exercise is so much more effective with the, the long neck, which is hard. It's hard to remember to keep the long neck for me too, as I'm teaching, teaching more of the, with the classes we've been doing the virtual and doing the classes with, while we're teaching, you know, I'll be like, okay, doing the pointed dog thingy and I'll realize my head's down like this because it's just more comfortable. <laughs> so um ways well here's an interesting thing ways to cue um that quadruped position and um the plank right ways to cue that to minimize i'm interested in hearing what others do to minimize the pressure in your just your arms and your wrists and all the places that we are working but we don't want that to be our predominant you know pain point i guess so we have we have one. Go ahead. Dana has one where she where you push the floor away, which I like. But yeah, I like that. I like also the feeling of like a cat kind of clawing, so they get the lat engagement, and then micro bend the elbows a little bit if they tend to be people that hyperextend the elbow. So a little micro bend, push into the floor, spread the fingers, pull back. All those help to get shoulder girdle connected before they push up into the plank, and of course the abdominals. Um, drawing up and in, but anybody no. else, I don't know, just no, my top ones. <laughs> that's, yeah. Well, going, going back to the quadruped position, um, and, and this is something that I notice I'm queuing more doing the online stuff with people because I'm not there in the studio to watch what they're doing, so they kind of have to correct themselves a little. Um, but uh, one of the uh, one of the things that I will have them do that reminds them to bring their head back up is if they're um, let's say they're on uh, balancing on one arm or one leg, right? Um, a lot of times, what will happen is if they when they lift their right leg, they lean out to the left side to compensate. So I'll have them look um, down, um, make sure that the thigh is um, directly, or their knees directly under their hip, so that they're not leaning out to that side, so um, they have their proper alignment. But by cueing them to look at that, and then cueing them to bring their eyes back to the floor, it, it kind of reminds them to, to lift their head back up and lengthen their neck by making them look down and then having them look away. So that's just a trick that I've um, learned since February. Because <laughs> if I'm in the studio, you know, and I have them there, I can correct them, move them to the spot that I want. But if they're doing it online from home, I need them correct. All right, can you can you repeat that cue, Allison? There's some noise in the background. A, a cue if they are um, in the quadruped position. But, um, you know, balancing, you know, lifting one arm or, or lifting one leg. Uh, a lot of times the compensation for that is just to lean out to the other side so that the thigh is um, at an angle, which obviously we don't want um, because it's not really uh, doing the work that we want them to do with the core. So by having them bend their head and look down, at where, where is their knee? Is their knee directly beneath the hip or is the knee coming in at an angle and correct for that? And then bring the, um, now once you've corrected that, now look down at the floor, lengthen the neck. It's just 
um, it, it kind of reminds you to remind them, uh, but it also makes sure that they are doing the, the work correctly and not just that compensation. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I like that because it is a struggle to get people to see if their hips are lined up or not when we go to do this. And it's hard to see on the camera, especially with the limitations that the clients have in there for, for filming themselves. You know, they've mm -hmm. got sometimes little iPads or little phones and I'm like, oh my God, I can't see that. But let me just see if I can remind you. <laughs> but yeah, Not everyone has a nerdy husband like me who set up my, I have a camera. And, yeah. So awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, lots of lots of precision. I think um, I am uh, from a gym type background, so uh, and not a body worker person before this. So it's taken me a long time to really kind of understand it. So I don't know. It's a journey. It is a journey. One person, um, uh, question that it, I'd love uh, feedback on ways that you guys uh, cue this um, to, to try to prevent this from happening. Um, but one of the things that um, I'm always after is, you know, the shoulders. Get your shoulders down, plug the shoulders in. Uh, I, I say that a million times. Um, it never, it just, you know, they do two and then they go back to um, you know, the finger shoulders up. So um, the, the place that it bothers me the most is supine arms on the reformer. So the, they'll do a couple correctly, but then the moment that I have them lift their head or, um, or you know, they start to get tired or whatever, they you know, protract the shoulders. Um, so are there, what cues do you guys use to keep their shoulders in the correct plug-in position. I talk a lot about the scapula and really adhere, like bringing the scapula back on the rib cage. So I do a lot of like protraction, retraction. So you like, you feel, roll your shoulders forward, now roll them back and tuck the tip, the bottom part of the scapula down into an imaginary pocket and kind of, and feel the scapulas really on the rib cage as you're extending the arms. So that's one of one of the things that I've just like working with people's rotation because some people are rolled forward already, right? Just as a natural mm -hmm. way in their body. So like roll it back or if they're back, you know, naturally like where is that? It's almost fine like neutral with the, sh yeah. <laughs> the shoulder joint. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Go ahead. I mentioned the shoulder slap that we'll do sometimes to kind of like kind of do right <laughs> to get the shoulders to fall into that door frame arm kind of position where the shoulders do fall down onto um, the mat. And in doing that, the shoulder blades kind of find their settle spot. Um, and that's just one of those exercises. It's very, it's you know, pretty passive, um, and you and it's working that protraction and retraction a little bit. Um, and then you can kind of de describe those door frame arms um, and have them find that and hold that as they're doing their pulls. Um, another thing I talk about with that shoulder placement is trying to get people to feel equally broad across their chest as their back. And so I'm kind of thinking about these shoulder head points, right, as spokes going out to the sides, getting broad through the shoulders, um, and not just through the chest and not just through the back. Um, I don't know if that always sinks in with most people, but um, I don't know, it's, it's a good image to me, like thinking about that, like, what is that? that illustration of that man with the arms. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, with the spoke. Yeah. Really bad the hypocrisy or something, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
You guys, I have to run to another meeting, but I'm so excited to be here with you. And do you guys meet every Thursday at one? Is this okay? Every, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Great, great feedback or great comments. And, yep. yeah, yeah. And just so cool to like be with peers. Like I, I'm kind of isolated up here in Reno, so I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. <laughs> it's great to see you. Yeah. Good to see you too, Kim and everyone. Yeah. And um, I will definitely put it on my calendar. So for next yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be sending an email out. Zaina did you last night or one of us can do that. An email. They also posted, I think on Facebook and Instagram, a so, reminder, but I'm, I'm not so well versed on that. Yeah, the, the last few weeks, um, I, yeah, I think it's good to, I actually, if you go to the I in the top of the, the Zoom page, you can, it'll, you can copy it and paste it right to your calendar. This, Ooh. like, oh. yeah. Oh, good. Don't yeah. even have to keep hunting for this meeting ID like, every week. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I realized that one day. I was like, oh my God, because I was like, what do these buttons mean? Yeah. And yeah. I'm assuming that I can invite other instructors, like from yeah, Reno. Or? Absolutely, okay. yeah, okay. totally, yeah, so totally. Cool. And Zaina will normally be here. It's just she's stuck at the doctor. So. Okay, well, big hugs, you guys. Bye. We'll see you next week. Bye. Okay. Yep. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet. All right. I guess yeah, we're about at time anyway. So yeah. I just thanks what everyone. I do, oh, if you guys want to go, that's fine. Um, I just wanted. To, I was remembering okay. something about that cue about keeping the shoulders down, which I found super helpful. Um, so I was doing, you know, push through on the reform on, on the Cadillac, you know, where you hold the bar and then you push through, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's where I'm like, keep your shoulders down, keep your shoulders. And I had someone say to me, cause I, they were instructing me to think about engaging the side body, like your obliques mm -hmm. and your lats. And it almost got the focus so much off of like, the shoulders just naturally kind of went down if because I was thinking, you know, the, the scapula goes into the little pockets and then you think about just engaging the side body and I found that super helpful. It helps you disassociate because you're yeah. focused to somewhere else. Yeah, it makes sense. And you relax, you relax because you weren't so aware of oh, my shoulders and my ears, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then when we're stressed, we like tense up anyway and we're like, oh my yeah. God, you're yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to like blurt out and what I had no idea really what it was about. But I no, so you happy. you were great. It was you had great feedback. Thank you. It, it was it's yeah. uh, great to meet everybody. Yeah, it's nice. It's yeah, hope, yeah. Keep coming. Invite your friends. I know. I'll try. Usually, I, it seemed like I was always teaching at the time it was happening, but today I yeah took a day off. So yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Thanks Bye. for hosting uh, Kim and Genevieve. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, Allison. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.